Hey, what's up guys? This is Jason Paradise bringing you another match from our Road to Paris online qualifiers that happened this past July. And this was a semi-final match between Axelou89 and Alessandro90. This is a Necro mirror match actually, with Axelou bringing Fleshbane to battle. Whereas Alessandro is going to be using Adar Malik. This is a best of five series, and the winner in this series will be moving on to play for a shot at going to Paris and the potential world championship for 2013. So there is a lot on the line. Guaranteed top two finish as well for whoever wins this match right here. If you finish in second place, awesome Razor Gaming package as well, waiting for that second place. But the big thing is that first place, getting to go to Paris, France, and potentially take home the title of world champion. So in this match, Axelou and Alessandro, like we are saying, this is a Necro Mirror match. So these are battles of attrition. Very long, normally very down to the wire. Um, a lot of relying on the card Atropos. I'm sure we'll be seeing that quite a bit from Alessandro playing Adar. Uh, Adar has what I like to call the Endless Loop, where he can return a creature from his graveyard to his hand after it has died. And since Atropos can bring things back from graveyard as well, he gets this giant loop of creatures coming back. Already in this game, uh, it feels like Alessandro... Uh, has a little bit of an advantage at the moment just because Axelou has a lot of higher resource cards in his hand. Already going to play that Banshee only with the six resources takes out that Decay Spitter and uh, trying to take a little bit more of that board control. Um, we already know that uh, it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle for Axelou simply because he isn't going to be able to play as many cards per turn right now. Uh, two pals in his hand, not going to be able to do the most with that just based on what's on the board right now. And the longer these games go, the more of an advantage it gives to Alessandro, just simply because Adar is such a late game hero with that endless loop I was talking about. And another thing to point out is Alessandro, just like, like he just did there, is raising his magic ability, which means his deck more than likely has some higher end spells in there. Just used a shadow image. We'll see if he has some soul reavers. Uh, possibly if he puts any more points in there, if he goes up to something like a puppet master. Uh, and if that's the case, Fleshbane, who is a much more creature oriented uh, deck, might have some issues against some of that control capability of the spells. But Axel using those banshees. Um, three Banshees total out on the board right now, two on Axel's side. Really uh, wants to keep control, of course, of the creatures on the battlefield. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like, I mean, there's a good possibility Alessandro has a fireball. He did it right as I said. There's a possibility he had a fireball in his hand, has that four magic, wipes those two Banshees off the board. They could potentially be brought back, though, as Axel does have his Atropos already in his hand. Uh, Tropo is such a powerful card for Necros, able to take two creatures that have died from your graveyard, put them directly back into your hand. So there's a chance we could see those Banshees come back into play in just a little bit. Right now though, Axel, it does feel like it's kind of still in Alessandro's favor. Axel opting to play the Decay Spitter. We'll see who he poisons. He's going to poison the Mooks, uh, Moon Silk at the top row and just block this Banshee off with another Spectre. This still looks to me like it's going to be an uphill battle this game for Axel, as every turn that passes favors more and more to the Adar player. And this is the first time in the game that Alessandro's really stopping to think about his play. He is putting six points into magic. There's the Puppet Master, which is 
yet again such a game changer. Takes the Spectre that Axel had just put out, and he's going to be able to do more damage to Fleshbane without really suffering any consequence. Take control of a creature, bring it to your side. It's kind of a one-two combo using uh, Puppet Master. You take one of their creatures, you gain a creature, so they're losing some of their defense, you're gaining offense. Very strong card. Axel, with the cards that are in his hand, <coughs> is going to face a pretty ne tough next couple rounds. If he does fall behind, it would go down to 0-1 uh, in the series. Remember, best of five here. So it is crucial to pull ahead. If you can get something like a, a two-game lead, if it goes 2-0, you have such a huge uh, chance of winning a best of five just simply because it's not likely to lose three straight at that point. Alessandro, however, is being kept in check. Every time he kind of tries to pull away, he gets caught up with Axel. It's still 11-11, and Alessandro decides to opt for using the Forbidden Flame there, wipes the entire board, and that's a risky card always to play. I mean, it's great to regain your control of the board, but depending on what your opponent has in their hand, if you don't have more control spell, something like an Armageddon, and they can just flood the board with creatures, well, it's going to be a really tough way to come back. There's the Atropos coming out. He is going to bring those Banshees back, like we had mentioned before. So he does have a little bit more uh, chance for removal. So if some big creatures come out, if some heavy hitters are in the way, those Banshees will be able to remove them from play. Right now, our Adar player seems to be pondering his options. With those two Banshees in Axel's hand, since we are looking from Axel's perspective here in this match, anything that Alessandro does put out could instantly be taken down. Banshee instantly kills a unit when it comes into play. But Alessandro looks like he's going to be opting to kill the Atropos, first of all. No shadow image in his hand, that means, because he would have shadow image that and take some creatures from his graveyard if he had the capability to do so. All of Axel's creatures are going to be blocked off. In a situation like this, he doesn't have too many capabilities from what his hand currently presents. Those cosmics aren't the most effective right now. He's going to opt to pull a card, grabs another creature, and even if he uses his pow to do some damage to Adar right here, not the best situation for a couple turns down the line. Adar is running out of cards in his hand, but that does not mean much with an Adar player. Do not let that fool you. He can instantly bring something back from the dead if it dies for six resource. Adar is pretty much, in, at least in my opinion, one of the strongest games in the uh, strongest late game heroes currently uh, in at least the metagame uh, for the past month or two. And if he does have something like another fireball in his hand, I don't know what kind of spells he still possesses in his deck. Uh, could spell trouble for our flesh, uh, flesh Bane player. There's just a perfect setup there on the board for a fireball, but Axel didn't mind throwing down that archer and uh, taking a chance. Considering how... oh, there's the shadow image. That's the spell he's going to opt to play on this No? Oh, there we go. He's going to Shadow Image the Banshee and takes that right off the game board. And suddenly we have a giant advantage for our Adar player who puts his Atropos out onto the battlefield. More than likely going to be bringing back either Decay Spitters or um, some sort of other mid to higher end creature card just so he can have those for those next turns. Um, he hasn't bumped up to six might on his side so he still might not have any banshees in his deck. Uh, he might have just 
kept those shadow images so he could take from another player. Speaking of which, another Banshee coming into play on Axelou's side to kill that Atropos. Now that's a very interesting strategy because you can either, one, let Atropos live and let him just kind of stop that endless loop that Adar is able to play, or you could try to kill him and force Adar to use that ability, use that six resource, and kind of push his hand in a way. Uh, that way he isn't able to flood the board with other creatures or use other powerful spells. Um, this becomes less and less of a possibility as the game goes on further and further. If you get up to 19, 20 resources, he's going to be able to play that and whatever he wants as well. So this is where things are becoming a little bit more, I guess you could say, sticky of a situation for both players. Both are on very low life. Um, Shantiri Ruins comes out, and we are going to see another shadow image, which means we're probably going to see that Banshee get shadowed. And there is another POW Death Seeker coming out. That is going to be GG this first round. Alessandro takes game one um, with that Banshee play. Let's hop right into game two. So now with Alessandro leading this series 1 0, he is in a good position. This is a best of five, which means he only needs to win two of the next four games to go on to the grand finals and have his shot at Paris. Axelou fighting from behind now at this point, as that he needs to win three of the next four. In a competitive gaming environment, and, and if you've ever played any game at all competitively, you'll understand this, it is ridiculously hard to come back after being down just simply because of the pressure that's on you. So Axelou is going to have a little bit of pressure on him at this point. Uh, speaking of pressure, look at the pressure he has already applied to the board this early into game two. He's put out his bard. He's got a ghoul. He's got basically three creatures already staggered around the board that are all going to say, hey, I'm playing really aggro this game. He's already got his Atropos in his hand. He already has a Banshee in his hand. Not to mention the Decay Spitter, which is actually coming out right now. And he, he didn't even mind sacrificing his 1-1 creature to smack the Moon Skeleton because of the two poison from the Decay Spitter. He is taking very good control of the board early into this game. And right now it feels like he is in a much better situation than he was in game one this far into uh, that game. So the way I see this game playing out, and this is is probably the same thing for the entire series, Axel needs to establish really great early game dominance. We had mentioned it so many times before, Adar is so good late game, and I don't want to beat a dead horse by repeating that over and over, but this is exactly what Axel is trying to do here strategically. He wants to put as much damage onto Alessandro early as he can, because the more resources, the more spells that become avail available for Alessandro, the harder it is for Axel to come back and win. We saw just a few seconds ago him using that POW. He's already put six might into his stats, so he can play those Banshees as they come and take those creatures out it's just like I was mentioning putting that pressure on he moves his creature down to the bottom row and that's gonna force out the forbidden flame Alessandro said whoa this is getting way too crowded here on the board we need to clear this out this is the perfect time for Axel to take all of his resources and pour as many creatures as he can out onto the board uh, just playing that Spectre, playing that Wraith, he wants to put out all of the creatures he can because Alessandro doesn't have the resources yet to be able to play the spells that can deal with it. Sure, he might have a Shadow Image or a Soul Reaver here, but it's not going to deal with both because he doesn't have eight resources which you'd need to play both of those or two spells. He is going to put out a Magic Peddler, and since he's already used the Forbidden Flame, that means he must have the Silent Death in his hand. That's the only other unique spell I can think of a Dark can play. So we might be seeing Alessandro use the Silent Death to start taking down some of those fat creatures that uh, Axel's going to be playing here. 
uh, whether that be his Atropus or these uh, Decay Spitters that are coming out. Just four four creatures on the back row right now, the back line for Alexandre, uh, for Alex Salou, I should say. Uh, gotta be careful. Alessandro does have five magic, which means he could potentially have something like a fireball or uh, or even put another point in and use an Armageddon and clear this board out again. Uh, he does have seven cards in his hand, so we're, oh, there's the point. Puppet Master is going to be actually what comes out. Going to grab Axel Spectre and uh, tip the board favor back onto his side of things for just the moment. But Fleshbane pulling another Decay Spitter. Uh, he's going to be killing the ghoul this turn uh, from Alessandro with the poison. Um, he could play a Decay Spitter if he wants to, to take out a tree, but he wants to stagger those units, it looks like. Uh, Got to play a Spectre instead in the front row. He doesn't want any crazy fireballs coming out and taking out a couple of his creatures because uh, he, he is in a pretty good spot. I mean, he's got a six life lead, and although... Adar is getting stronger as every turn goes on, as he is going to be able to start playing his Atropo soon, as long as he has it in his hand, and, and do that endless loop of pulling creatures back from the dead. Uh, if Axel can secure this board dominance, there is a good chance that he can tie this series up 1-1, and uh, essentially make this into just a best of three again. You know, If you go 1-1 in a best of five, the series is all tied up it is essentially starting over clean slate that would be a perfect scenario for Axelou he does not want to fight up against a 2-0 deficit and as if on command Alessandro is pulling out that Atropos uh, there is nothing in Axel's hand that can instantly kill this so he doesn't have a way to force this next turn uh, unless he I mean he does have two decay spitters he could play both of those and poison the Atropos. That is the one possibility. He has 10 resource. Uh, that would have essentially put five poison counters on the Atropos and kill it because of the Decay Spitter already in its lane. So we'll see how he decides to play this out. He does open himself up to a potential load of spells, though, if he does decide to go that route. And looks like he's going to think about it here for a minute. Um, that could be the actually the option he goes with here. Um, there is one, and there's two. This is really good strategy, in my opinion, from Axel. Because putting those five poison counters, that means he's going to make Adar either spend six resources here to pull his Atropos back from the dead, because he doesn't want to lose that capability of raising creatures, or make him play without a tropos for the rest of the game taking away that big major weapon from adar malik is so big if you can do that before he gets to 12 13 14 resources um, and as we just saw it does look like our adar player is going to be using his six gonna say no i can't live without that atropos i need it back the other four of his resources he's going to be spending to put out a decay spitter of his own it's going to take one out, and uh, this is still pretty much going to favor our Fleshbane player. Um, but he's going to have to make something happen quick. There's a lot of lower resource creatures in his hand, which can be taken out rather effectively with how crowded the board is, just with one fireball, with one... Uh, well, obviously, at Armageddon would definitely do it. <laughs> there is Axel's Atropos on his own, and he's going to be placing out a Banshee to take out the Hangman Tree, do a ton of damage to Alessandro, who now finds himself at a 10-life deficit. This is a tough point for him. With seven creatures on Axel's side of the board, and only three on the Adar side, there's an Armageddon. That is a great call right there. It took seven resources to play out because of the event cards that are in play, 
but more than worth it to clear the board, wipe it clean. Um, unfortunately for him, though, there is a Pow Death Seek, and, and like on command, Axel's going to play that out. There's only five health left on Aradar player, and what a critically different... Uh, that wouldn't even be the right way to say it. What a incredibly... There we go. That sounds a little bit better. Incredibly different match than we were seeing uh, from the first game, right? Um, the first game came right down to the wire in a perfect play by Alessandro secured game one. This has been all Fleshbane from the get-go here in game two as Axel looks primed and ready to even this series up and start up, up a game three. How can our Adar player get back into this? What can he potentially do? I mean, we know that he does have a lot of spells. I mean, he's been a mainly a spell, a, a spell-based Adar from the get-go. He's got looks like more decay spitters. Gonna poison the wraith on uh, um, on the Axelou side of things. And what could he do to get back into this game? He's gonna have to block off the other creatures. He does not know if Axel has another pal in his hand. Um, so he needs to be able to block off all rows so that he can't take another three damage, at least in his mind, right? He doesn't know what's coming at him right now. Axel, on the other hand, does have another Banshee in his hand, which means he's still going to be able to punish, still going to be able to take damage. Going to kill that Atropos again, which is going to, again, force the Adar hand. Either he has to play without the... Oh, perfect use of the Cosmic there. And he's going to actually pull two POWs. Wow, perfect draw. That is going to take Adar down to one life. Which means if there is any, any chance that he could play through a POW next turn. Whether that's killing the one of the creatures in one of the rows. Whether that is... A row just being unblocked. That'll be GG. That will be the end of game two, and we'll be tied. There's a Puppet Master that comes out, which does help a little bit because it secures a hole. Um, and <laughs> after all of that, hey, here's a couple damage. I'm going to try to get back into this. Adar's fighting for his life here. Um, what Axel pl pulls next, he'll probably draw a card as soon as this, uh, the turn starts, just to get options. Um, but if he draws something like a Banshee, if he pulls out um, any sort of card with a quick attack so that he has two, he'll be fine. That is a card that will do it right there. As he plays his fortune, He's going to be able to pull out that's the Serious Legion. That'll be able to let him pull back a Banshee, kill a unit. He should be able to just use his power straight away and win the game. Uh, that is GG if he just plays that card. We'll see if he opts to go that route. There, I'm assuming, is the Banshee coming out. Yes, he is going to select his Banshees. He is going to kill the Decay Spitter. There comes the POW, and GG, this is game two, going to Axelou89, who evens this series up at 1-1 one, one apiece. Let's hop right into our third game. Now with things tied 1-1, one, one, everything is back to where we essentially started, and we're now at a best of three. Whoever can win two of the next three games moves on to play for their shot at Paris. And a little bit of that pressure has been relieved off our Fleshbane player now. If you are in that competitive player's mindset, that, that the shoes of a player here in this match, that really gets rid of some of the jitters. If you had that first big loss, right, um, that down to the wire game one where your nerves are rushing and, oh, he made a really good play and you lose, you have to recompose yourself. And Axel definitely played his cards perfectly in game two to come back and and even things up. Now, 
he has to be 100% sure he can do that again, right? He has to be able to take full advantage of what cards he has in his hands. He already, we know he loves to be able to use Banshees and Decay Spitters to the best uh, of his ability, and he has two of each card already in his hand. On the flip side of the board, Alessandro90, he has to make sure that he doesn't let momentum completely slip away from him. He pulled a beautiful victory in game one, and the second game, he kind of got trampled. Uh, there's a chance he might wanted to have uh, let his Atropos just rot in the graveyard, to be totally honest, because he was so worried about using that six resource when he didn't really have enough to, to play um, cards every single time yet, that, yeah, he was going to lose one of his weapons if he did that, but it's so hard if you're consistently worrying about reviving your Atropos to stay in the game. So, if Alessandro loses this game, if it goes to one in favor of Axelou, I would see Axelou taking the series, simply because if you lose two games in a row, your emotions get shot. It is incredibly hard emotionally to come back from that, knowing how much is on the line. And Alessandro is in a good position so far. He has established dominance of the board with four creatures out. We know from the way that Axel has played his uh, hands in the past couple of games, he doesn't have any mass removal spells. The only thing he's worried about is getting to six might and starting to clear using those banshees and reviving those banshees in whatever way possible with his uh, fortune cards and his atropos when that does pop out. Uh, probably a little bit later this game. Alessandro, uh, we already have seen him put four points into might, three into his magic. So right now focusing a little bit more this game on his creatures. He's adapting, it looks like. Not only is he playing with the card he's been dealt, but he's changing his strategy up. Look how many cards he's put on the board. The strategy, he's, he's adapted to Axelou's deck just simply because he knows there are no mass removal spells. He says, okay, you want to play with Banshees? Remove my creatures and, uh, and and continue reviving those Banshees. All right, well, how about I just give you an entire board full of creatures? You don't have the resources to remove all six of these. Let me just keep loading the board up. Smart play. Very smart play. Um, and... Unless we haven't seen something, uh, you know, <laughs> some hidden spells <laughs> that just haven't seemed to pop up for our Flesh Spain player, which I sincerely doubt is the case, then uh, Alessandro's making the right call. Uh, there is a Decay Spitter coming out, which means we are going to see a Vampire Knight be eliminated from the board. And uh, suddenly things are a little bit more even. Um, although I still think Alessandro is in a pretty decent position. Unfortunately for him, though, next turn Axel's going to be able to start playing those Banshees if he does so choose. Um, but in the meantime, a lot of great damage going out onto Fleshbane. He's down to 12 life already, so it's this has been a little bit of a flip-flop back and forth. Game 1 being close, Game 2 a landslide in favor of Axel. Oh, there is a fireball. Ouch, that bottom row eating 4 damage to both creatures, which means that a ghoul's going to die, and that poor Decay Spitter is going to be down to just one life. Ooh. Seria's Legion does come into Axelou's hand, which means as soon as one of these Banshees die... I'm assuming he has four Banshees in this deck, and if that is the case, after that's dead, he'll be able to pull two more into his hand and give himself so many more weapons to work with. Uh, Alessandro can, you know, do his Shadow Images, use his Soul Reavers, but as he's loading up the board, if there's just a, a bajillion Banshees in Axel's hand, the most important creature on the board every single time is going to be dying. So, how does Alessandro respond to this? More than likely, I'm assuming he's going to be using some sort of spell, try to put some more damage, potentially take Axel down as fast as he can. Um, we haven't seen him use many higher might creatures, so 
uh, I'm a little surprised he hasn't started going towards that six magic yet this game. Um, let's see, this should be telling what he does. He actually pulls a card. So maybe just doesn't have the options in his hand that he wants. That Soul Reaver on the Banshee is quite the choice. Um, now with Axel having that Serious Legion in his hand, I'll be interested to see if he plays that on the Banshee this turn. Um, or if he's a little bit more worried about defense right now, considering that he's still eating damage. Another 4 damage from the Decay Spitter and the Moon Silk Skeleton come out onto Fleshbane that turn. And there is going to be the fourth point into Fortune. So we are going to see Serious Legion come out. And he is going to most likely be playing the Banshee, taking those into his hand, just like we anticipated before. Putting that out, what creature is he going to kill? Is he going to do the Vampire Knight in the top? Is he going to do the Decay Spitter in the back? Perhaps even the bottommost creature so that his Decay Spitter can survive one more turn, as that it only has a measly one life. He actually doesn't do any of those three options. He's going to take out the Moon Silk Skeleton. Interesting choice. Um, I'm assuming that's because he doesn't want the Banshee to be crippled. Um, <laughs> that's a good reason why he didn't use it down there. He lets the Decay Spitter die and instantly puts out another, poisons the Vampire Knight at the top lane. And it's kind of all even across the board as we just see two, two halves of the battleground, both peppered with uh, creatures in the shape of an S. Uh, it's still such a huge advantage to Alessandro right now at this point in the game, however, as that is a very peculiar move. He had four creatures on the board, and he could have forced... He knows that Axelou just used Seria's Legion to pull out Banshees. He really could have forced him to use more before using the Forbidden Flame. I don't agree with that move whatsoever. I don't understand why he would clear the board when he had an extra creature and could have forced Axel to spend resources. That is just... That's odd. That was very odd. Um, perhaps you can leave down in the comment section below if you agree with that move or not, but that... If he ends up losing this match, I feel like that right there is a turning point. It it just, that, that didn't seem to make much sense to me. Uh, Magic Peddler comes out, since he just used the Forbidden Flame, like in Game 2, um, although we didn't really ever see him use Silent Death in Game 2, he more than likely just pulled Silent Death into his hand, and he does have the magic to use it, so we'll see if that is one of the two cards that are left in his hand. Distinct card advantage to Axel, and even though he is 10 health down, I feel like this game has suddenly shifted completely into his favor after the use of the Forbidden Flame. Uh, Sudden Death is in his hand, and he is going to use it um, and pull a card after. Uh, Wandering Bar, which means that he's going to grab his Atropos uh, and start to try to revive creatures, grab some more cards into his hand as he is desperately in need of more capabilities. He only has two different things he can play at this point, um, and that is really tough. So, Axel, on the other hand, has Ultra Vash. He's going to be pulling out. He's going to actually be destroying one of his creatures to pull back. Is it going to be a Decay Spitter, or is it going to be a Banshee? Does he want to keep recycling those Banshees for board control? He's getting to the point now, resource-wise, where it's going to be the Decay Spitter that comes out. He wants to kill something instantly and block off the Bard as well. Really good play. Really good play. Um, he has two Pails in his hand. He can kill the Bard next turn. I mean, Alessandro, we know he has the Atropos. We know the Atropos is in his hand, which means he'll be able to grab two creatures from his graveyard. Strategically speaking, I'm assuming the Atropos will come out and block either the topmost lane or the bottom middle lane, so that he can have that in front of the Lamasu or the Banshee. 
actually, I'm going to eat my words. He plays an Armageddon and ends the turn. He has the Atropos in his hand because he pulled it with Bard, but he's going to up not to play it because he knows there are Banshees in Axel's hand. This is a good call, I think. But at the same time, if he might have just wanted to eat the death of the Atropos and grab more creatures so he at least had something he could do. Because now he's in a world of hurt. He just used Armageddon. It's almost like conceding, okay, I don't have options. Go ahead and pummel me. Uh, out comes one POW, um, so three creatures on the board, and that POW that just did three damage. Slowly the scale is chipping more on the side of Fleshbane. Um, we do have that Puppet Master coming out, but it isn't going to mean too much. Next turn, Axel's going to have 12 resources, which means he'll be able to play two Banshees if he wants to. Take out that Atropos and the Spectre, and still do one damage to the Adar. Um... Is he going to do that? Or is he going to decide to block with the Wraith and use the pay? Oh my gosh, another Death Seeker pulls out. Um, and he is going to go with option number two that we were just discussing. Uh, and block with the Wraith. And it looks like he isn't going to be able to play the pal because he was one resource short. So lots and lots of damage here um, coming next turn. The Banshee can kill off... The Atropos. Um, oh, wow. Still a chance that Adar Malik can win this game as he does throw a POW. Takes our Fleshbane down to 5 health. But two POWs are in. <laughs> Shinoshi coming out. I'm assuming the Banshee now is going to be used to destroy that card. And it is. It is eliminated from the board, shuffled back into his library. How can Alessandro turn this back in his favor right now? We already know he used an Armageddon. Uh, unless he grabs some sort of mass removal spell from his deck, this is looking more and more like Game 3 is going to go to Axelu 89 as he is in dominating fashion taking control of this game, and, and it all goes back to that Forbidden Flame play. That is where everything turned around. Let's see if Axel can close this game out and take a 2-1 lead, or if Alessandro can take that early game advantage he have and say, okay, I had a little bit of a dip here in the mid-game. I'm still going to win. What is he going to do here? Um, I'm assuming pull a card, um, as he is taking quite a long time to think about his play. And uh, rightfully so. Rightfully so in this position. If I was in this spot, I would be sweating bullets. I won a great first game, and then that second game was just being run over. Third game, I was doing so well, and then this. Uh, one crucial mistake flips everything around, and here we are, potentially about to go down 2-1. And it looks like Alessandro's going to bring a creature back from the dead as he attacks just once with his Atrobos. Going to throw out a Decay Spitter on the Wraith, a Lamasu coming out to block one of the Banshees, I'm assuming, right? Yep. Which means only one damage can go down onto Adar this turn from the Banshee at the bot lane. Really, nothing in the Fleshbane player's hand that can kill off a creature and then force more damage through. And he is finally out of Banshees to play and kill a creature instantly. If he had another Banshee, he could remove the Atropos, remove the Decay Spitter, play a POW, and do considerable damage, and even this game up even further. But... That is not the case. The options that present themselves really just allow him to load the board up with more, like, say, Vampire Knights, or maybe draw a card and see if he can grab one more thing. He doesn't want to use his Cosmic. That would just bring Adar right back into this. That, that'd be silly. Um, let's see. He's going to draw a card, most likely, and that ghoul 
is pretty useless. That is not a card he wants to be drawing at this point in the game. Um, he's kind of stuck right where he was before. So he's just going to take the damage where he can and exchange it and most likely put these Vampire Knights out and just pray and hope that Adar does not have any spells that are going to clear this all off the board if he had something like another Armageddon, you know, um, something that will just wipe everything clean again. That would be a nightmare because then Axel is right back where he was before uh, and that would be a pain. That would be a real pain. It would be a real crapshoot to see who comes out on top at that point. Alessandro, two cards, two options in his hand, and most likely going to be pulling another card. He didn't have a creature die last turn, so there's nothing he can revive. If he doesn't have a spell to play, he's going to be overrun. The Fleshbane Swarm of the Undead is going to rip him apart. That is exactly what I was afraid of for him. There's another Armageddon coming out, and we're kind of right back at square one again. As, wow, look at this. Pulls out another creature, and, and oh, he has two pals in his hand, and he's going to be able to revive another. This is such an amazing play. Three pals are going to come out in the three empty spaces. And that is GG because Alessandro only had nine life. That is nine life there. What an absolutely killer finish. Alessandro has to be kicking himself as he loses game three to an Atropos. Three pals. Unreal. That was absolutely Absolutely incredible, stellar play by Axelou as we are already underway in game four and all of the momentum, everything is on Axel's side now. <laughs> as I can't get over how good that play was. I wish I had an instant replay functionality in this game right now. Unreal. The Armageddon was actually the downfall of Alessandro in that game as he opened up every single lane. Atropos came out. He had two POW Death Seekers in his graveyard, grabbed them both. He had four in his hand, used three, and took the victory. Now, Alessandro, after starting game one so beautifully with that clutch victory, is with his back against the wall. He's the one fighting for his tournament life. If he loses this game four, he's gone. He's out. That is the end of the line, and he's stuck with a third slash fourth place finish. Whereas Axelou89 is just one, one small game away from taking out Adar, taking out Alessandro90, and advancing to the Road to Paris July Online Qualifier Finals. The Grand Finals are just a heartbeat away for him if he can lock this game down and secure victory. Whew, I need to take a deep breath. That was intense. That was potentially the best ending to a game that I have seen so far in the road to Paris. What kudos to Axelou for that play and spotting it. And let's do a little bit of analysis on this game so far. Axel is already up to five might. Through all my ranting and raving about how amazing that ending of game four was, or game three, I'm sorry, um, he has already progressed his might to five, and he has three banshees in his hand already. We know how much he loves those at this point. He has so much at his disposal, as he'll be hitting six resources next turn, and he'll be able to start doing some damage. Right now he's down one life, but again, after the comeback we saw last game, that doesn't mean too much. All the momentum is on his side. Alessandro has to be, in his mind, nervous. His heart has to be beating faster right now, right? There, there's a trip. There's a Forbidden Flame. 
that was a really good use of it there, considering, hey, four features on his side. But at the same time, too, getting rid of that huge mass removal, mass board clear, that wiping potential that early. I mean, he's still only at seven resources. That's tough. We know he has, what, two Armageddons in his deck we've seen him use uh, in game three. So there is that. He has those left. Um, but at the same time, that's a much higher magic cost spell. So it isn't going to be as readily available at his disposal yet. Uh, Atropos coming out, and this is killer, because if a Banshee comes out and kills it, he is forced to revive it this turn. That is shades of game two all over again. Uh, killing off that Atropos, I think one turn earlier than he did in game two. Here comes a crucial decision. Does he use six resources right now and revive that Atropos? He won't be able to play pretty much anything else this turn if he does. Or does he play the rest of game four without it? This could be a deciding decision in this entire game right now for Alessandro. Does he risk it all and leave his Atropos to rot in the graveyard? Or does he eat some damage next turn? Which wouldn't be too bad considering the week of the team Spirits event is out. He's going to let Atropos rot. He's pulling out a Shadow Image. Which means he's probably Shadow Imaging the Banshee. But that does mean he's going to be a Tropolis unless he has some sort of other fortune card that can revive his Atropos later. So will this decision pay off for our Adar player? This, this could be the deciding turn right here, the deciding decision. Deciding decision. That's a little bit redundant, saying the same thing over and over repeatedly. You get the point. But... He does Shadow Image the Banshee, the Banshee and pull out a Vampire Knight. So, going to be blocking a little bit of damage, but the Banshee's still going to be able to eat the face off Vidar for, <laughs> for one damage uh, as it attacks. And still in Axel's hand, he has another two Banshees. He has his Decay Spitter. He has a couple Pals as well. And there's going to be a little bit more damage again. Nuh uh uh, your Vampire Knight isn't going to be blocking any damage right now from my Lich. No, no, no. I am going to be taking as much damage as I can from you. And suddenly, Fleshbane has a three life advantage. This feels like it could very easily continue to snowball for Axelou. Alessandro is playing a Tropolis. He has already used his Forbidden Flame. A Fireball could come out here, take out those two creatures in the two mo topmost rows, which it does. Um, which is good. But, yet again, Axel has another Banshee ready to deploy, as well as POWs. He can put out a Banshee, take out a creature, still do some damage, and if he wants to, he can put out a POW and still do more damage. Uh, let's see if he does decide to do that, or if he wants to use his three to... He is going to draw a card and put out a Lingering Ghost instead. So all rows are accounted for, a creature in every row. There's no way that damage can sneak by and hit his Fleshbane. And he still has so many tools in his arsenal. So many different capabilities in his hand. Uh, if a, a big creature or something uh, that he doesn't like comes into play, he can use it to case bitter poison it. Uh, he still has six potential damage from his two pals in his hand, which is just a little, a little close to half of Adar's life. I mean, he's got barely over double that. So 13 life, that's going to be putting him on the tipping point of losing this game if those two pals come out and end up seeking his death. Shadow Image, which means the Banshee is going to come into play and kill off one of his units. Actually, both of his Banshees going to go down. That was a smart play. He used the ability to kill one, use the two damage to kill the other. Silent Death going to come out on the Ghost, and a Wandering Bard 
no valid choice, of course, because his Atropos is dead. So, right now, how is Axel going to respond to this? Does he want to pull out the Decay Spitter and poison that Banshee so it dies instantly? It looks like that is the case. Will those POWs be coming out? No, he opts to pull a card and only sends one out. Will the two, cre re two resource creature be coming out as well? No. He is not going to press, he's not going to overcommit to the board by placing out one more creature. I mean, if all three of those were in a line, could eat a fireball potentially and leave only his Decay Spitter with one life. That would not be good looks. So he's going to wait, he's going to be patient. He knows that he's in good control right now. He has a 10 life advantage in this game. He's going to see, stay calm, cool, collected. Puppet Master's going to come out on the Decay Spitter. Not as effective as Shadow Imaging. Two POWs. He pulls another POW. Two more POWs in his hand. That means that if he can only muster two more damage on Alessandro, two more, he wins the game. Right? There's one POW. He still has the other. That's three damage guaranteed. If he can only sneak by two damage, he is securing. He's punching a ticket into the final match of the July Online Qualifier. This is tense right now. What can Alessandro do to come back from this? He is clawing, fighting for dear life. As Adar and Alessandro are on the verge of tournament elimination. Another six resource, six magic spell coming out as he puppet masters that Wraith. Banshee coming out as well. And he thinks he is secure right now. Unfortunately, that is not the case. He has a pound in his hand. Surprise Legion <laughs> comes into his hand. That means he's going to be able to... Oh, he could he could have used that and pull a Banshee out. He could have just won right there. If he would have used the Banshee, um, if he could have used Surprise Legion and pulled out the Banshee, he could have uh, killed that and used his pow to, to win the game. Um... But that might still not be a problem. Um, or did he, uh, you know what? He might. He doesn't have four fortune in, uh, yet. <laughs> He's he can definitely win it this next turn though, if that's the case. Look at me, I'm jumping the gun here. He all he needs is one more point in fortune. I'm getting so excited for Axelou that I'm like freaking out over here. But unless Alessandro has some crazy means of Pulling out 16 damage this turn, the game is pretty much over. He could Surize Legion and pull back another POW, uh, or he can open up a lane with uh, a Banshee if he pulls one back. Now, he is taking a lot of damage, of course, from that Decay Spitter and the Banshee, so if for some reason Axel can't break through these defenses, then this is going to be a little bit tougher. But I'm pretty sure, especially now, th that, well, let's see. Is he going to put the fourth point into Fortune and use Sarah's Legion? Or does he have something else in his mind? I think he's, he's looking over the board one more time, making sure. I'm assuming this is going to be a fourth point. There it is. Sarah's Legion's coming out. What creature is he going to be putting out? Is it going to be the Banshee? It is. There's the Banshee. He is going to be removing that. Two damage there. Banshee comes into his hand. He's going to remove that creature. There's the POW. GG. Axelou89 has punched a ticket into the Grand Finals and has a shot at going to Paris for the World Championship. Stay tuned as more content from the Road to Paris will be coming your way in the near future. This is Jason Paradise signing off. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest up-to-date news on Road to Paris. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.